Imagine if it was possible to set up just a single VPN tunnel connection in your data center 48. And with this single config, if it were possible to have multiple remote sites dynamically bringing up the site to site VPN connection on demand to the data center whenever a secure connection is required, meaning you'd have less individual tunnels to configure, less associated traffic selectors per tunnel to configure. But the best part is you'd have absolutely zero static routes to configure. So all in all, no bloated configuration because even the security policy can be consolidated. I'm talking about dial-up VPN. Let's get to it because it's gonna be a lot of fun. So this is what our network topology looks like. We have two remote sites, each trying to form a tunnel with FortiGate 1 so that we can have access to network 10.10.10 .10 in the data center. So in order for all this to work, we need to do some basic configuration on FortiGate 1. So let's start there. So I'm on FortiGate 1 now. The first thing that's required is to create the user accounts for the remote firewalls. And to do that, we need to go to user authentication, user definition. The username here is going to be 40 gate 2 and the password will be 14 net. You click next and submit. Now we have our 40 gate 2 user account. Let's create another one, this time for 40 gate 3. FortiGate 3, Fortinet. Now we have our two user accounts. Let's define a group and put these two users into that group and make them group members. And the group is going to be dial-up 01. And now associating the members, FortiGate 2, FortiGate 3. And now that's done. The next thing is to create our VPN tunnel. We go to VPN, IPsec tunnels, new IPsec tunnel. I'm just going to call this one hub and it's going to be a custom configuration. Up until now we've been creating static tunnels but this is going to be a dial-up tunnel where we are referencing the dial-up user for the remote gateway. That's why we had to create the user accounts for FortiGate 2 and FortiGate 3. So we select remote gateway as a dial-up user and the associated interface is going to be our WAN 1 interface or port 1 interface. I'm going to leave everything as defaults. And here we want to create a device, a kernel device. Our preset key would be Fortinet. We'll use Ike version 2. And the types of IDs, we want to select here peer ID from a dial up group because we already have a dial up group which is a dial-up 01. I'm going to remove all of these phase one proposals and only leave one. AS256 GCM. And I'll even also change the development group to group 30. The local ID is 40 gate 01. And our local address, our local subnet here is 10.10.10.10 slash 32 for the remote address i'm going to leave it as 0, .0, 0.0.0 because this actually means we are allowing all ip addresses behind the remote gateway and right now we have multiple gateways and in practice you could have multiple sites connecting to your hub 40 gate so this is more scalable and therefore i'll leave it like this let's have a look at our advanced settings for phase two and once again i'm going to remove all of these and only have AES-256 GCM. And just to be consistent, I'm always going to select AES-256 GCM with development group 30. Now that our tunnel is configured, let's create security policy allowing this traffic. I'm just going to call this tunnel in. This is an inbound policy. And we say the traffic will be coming in from the hub tunnel interface and the outgoing interface will be the loopback zero interface because that's where our 10.10.10 .10 network is defined. The source, in the interest of time, I'm just going to say all sources, all destinations, and the service, I'm going to define all. Disable net, enable policy. Now we have our policy allowing inbound traffic. Let's clone this in reverse to allow outgoing traffic. Clone reverse, let's give it a name and call it tunnel out and the policy is in the disabled state let's enable that we're done with the config on 40 gate 1 and looking in the ipsec monitor you kind of expect that there'd be a tunnel interface here somewhere 
in the down state even. But notice that we don't have any. So let's move on to 40 gate 2. So on 40 gate 2, let's configure our tunnel. And once again, I'm going to call this tunnel 0. It's going to be a custom configuration. The difference here is that we do know what the IP address of the 40 gate 1 is. And that is 10.160.10.1. We reach that via our port 1 WAN interface. And we don't change anything here. Our appreciate key is 14 net. This configuration is going to use Ike version 2. I'm going to deselect all the proposals and have AS SHA-56, Diffie Hellman Group 30. Our local ID is going to be 40 gate 02. Our local subnet is going to be 20.20.20.20.20.32. The remote network that we're trying to access is 10.10.10.10.10 slash 32 and once again i'm removing the proposals so now our tunnel interface is configured let's create our firewall policy for that we go to policy and objects firewall policy tunnel in incoming interface is our tunnel interface outgoing interface would be our loopback zero interface the source is all destination all service all we are not doing any net on this policy and the policy is enabled by default. Now the next thing to do is clone this policy in reverse and we call that tunnel out. Set the policy in the enabled state. Now the next thing to do is we want to reach to network 10.10.10.10. We need to define a static route for that. We go to network static routes 10.10.10.10 to reach 10.10.10.10 we need to specify that we want to go over the tunnel interface. Now this looks successful, but before we do any tests, let's finish the configs from 40 gate 3 perspective. I'm on 40 gate 3, let's go to VPN and create our new tunnel. And I'm going to call this tunnel 0. Custom config, next. And once again, we do know what the IP address of the 40 gate 1 is. That's 10.160.10.1 via WAN interface. And our appreciate key is 40 net. Our Ike version is Ike version 2. I'm going to remove all of these. You really don't have to. It's just preference on my part. Diffie element group 30. Local IDs. 48.03 and here our local address is 30.30.30.30 slash 32 we want to get to network 10.10.10.10 slash 32 phase 2 proposal AS256 GCM development group 30 now we have our tunnel interface Let's create a static route that allows us to reach the network 10.10.10 .10 via this tunnel interface. For that, we go to network and we go to static routes. We say for destination 10.10.10, .10 let's forward this traffic out tunnel, z tunnel zero interface. And that is done. The last thing we need is firewall policy permitting this traffic. Now for our firewall policies configured, let's have a look at our network monitor and see what our VPN connection looks like. And it looks like our VPN connection is up. Now let's have a look at our 40 gate one. Now on 40 gate one on IPsec monitor, we see that we already have two VPN connections that have dynamically been created, but there's no traffic yet. Let's let's do some tests. Exec ping options. The source is 20.20.20.20 .20 .20 because we're on 40 gate 2 and we want to ping to 10.10.10.10 .10 and that works. Let's jump quickly over to 40 gate 3. Exec ping options. Source here is 30.30.30.30. .30 .30 .30. And we want to again ping to 10.10.10.10 .10 and the traffic also gets through and when we go back to 48.1 we just refresh 
and we can see that now the traffic is beginning to increment in both in incoming and outgoing direction but the most important thing that i want to highlight here is the fact that when you do when you sh when you show get router info routing table all you'll notice now we have two static routes that are associated to the hub interfaces the hub zero kernel interface hub one kernel interface and when we look at the static routes we go to network static routes we don't have any of those manually configured these are dynamic static routes this i believe is the beauty behind the dynamic vpns you'd recall from my previous video that i began the conversation around the traffic selectors and in this video you saw how important the traffic selectors are and in the next video we're going to go deeper into traffic selectors why they're a good idea and not so good idea in some instances. See you in the next one.